What's up, my friends? It's been a few weeks since we talked about the CCIE journey, so I owe you an update. In this video, we're going to talk mainly about the upcoming SD-WAN course and SD-WAN content that's on the CCIE exam, as well as talk about books and routing, so let's get going. So I know it's been a few weeks since I've checked in. That's not because I haven't been productive or anything. I've just got something going on in my personal life that I can't really talk about at this time. It's a good thing. It's nothing bad, but it is personal in nature. So just trust me when I say that I've got something going on that's been a little bit distracting, but I have made progress, good progress towards my CCIE. I'm now feeling good overall about the exam. And I'll actually say that at this point in my journey, I'm now most stressed about about the first three hours of the exam the design portion. Luckily, the design textbook is coming out soon, and I'm focusing on design content coming up later in the year for recording for CBT Nuggets, so that's pretty exciting. But I have been making progress in the routing, switching, and services side of things, as well as a big talking point, SD-WAN. So let's start out by talking about that routing. What have I done in the past couple weeks that's been really helpful? And then we're going to wrap up by talking a lot about how the SD-WAN course and the SD-WAN studying is coming along. So over the past couple weeks, I've gotten a lot of reading done. I read this book right here, Routing TCP IP Volume 1, Second Edition. And then I also read this book right here. Actually, the, the one of these books, I should say. The CCIE Route Switch Version 5. I read Volume 1 of this, which was written by Narvik and Peter here. Now, let me say this. I got some advice from someone in the community, someone that I look up to a lot, a gentleman by the name of Luke Snell. If you're going for your CCIE right now and you're not connected to Luke, jump on LinkedIn and get connected to Luke. He is an incredible mentor. He's got a fantastic blog, it, blog I should say, ether-net. I think that's .com. I'm going to put .com here and maybe a little question mark because I'm not positive. It's ether-net. Uh, and he is... Just incredibly thorough. He knows what he's doing. He's going through the CCIE journey with me right now, and uh, he's, he's a good friend. So let me just say that. Uh, Luke told me, his advice to me was read this book first, the CCIE Route Switch OCG, and then switch to Routing TCP IP. And that's exactly what I did. And that turned out to be, I think, a really good choice overall. The reason why is because this OCG does go very deep into the knowledge of the protocol itself, as well as the nuances and tips and tricks of protocols. So it's going to cover things like EIGRP, OSPF, ISIS, Layer 2, and then some additional items like services, route redistribution, filtering. It, it, this this book right here, Let me. I'm just going to say this. I think this book, Volume 1 of the CCIE Route Switch, I think this might honestly be the best technical read I have ever read. It starts out in every topic at square one, square zero. Like you, you could read this book not having ever read anything about EIGRP or OSPF. I don't think you should, but you could because that's how they really get you ramped up into the topics. And then they show a lot of command line operations and troubleshooting tips. This book, I really do, I can't stress it enough. This book was so fantastic and well-written, and it really, really takes you all the way up to advanced level tiers on all of these protocols in a really, really good way. The Routing TCP IP book was so incredibly deep, and it gets to an incredibly deep step really, really quickly that I really think like you shouldn't read this book until you've read the OCG because this, this was almost like reading the RFCs themselves. Every single packet that gets sent in OSPF is dissected. Now we're talking about how many bits and bytes are in this section of this header in this particular, it, I mean, this book is insanely deep into the protocols not as heavy on the configuration or the protocol nuances themselves. I'm almost wondering if this book was actually too deep for the today's CCIE Enterprise Infrastructure Exam. I'm not saying that it's not nice to have that depth of knowledge when it comes to OSPF or EIGRP. It's just that this is like really deep stuff. And in an exam that consists of an eight hour exam, five of which is during doing configuration, it makes me wonder if I really needed to go that deep into the protocols. Probably so. It's probably good to be masterful in a certain protocol before you sit for the exam. But my point is, 
is I really, I feel like this book right here, the CCIE Route Switch version 5, I think this book may have one of the biggest impacts on my success towards this exam that I have, even though routing, switching, and services and the stuff that was covered in this book only makes up about 20% of the exam. I still feel like this book has been critical and labbing these things has been critical too. A couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago, I did a video for YouTube that was on OSPF in EIGRP musings, funny things that I encountered along the way. And that was primarily fueled by content that I read out of these books. Things like, what, how does OSPF behave over a DMVPN tunnel when you don't choose the network type correctly? What is EIGRP over the top and how does it compare to DMVPN? And are these things really hard to configure in their own? They're really not. It's just understanding the protocol. And I feel like these books played a critical role in that. So what am I up to now? I have moved on to BGP. Now, BGP and OSPF, this is, this is, you know, I hope I'm not wrong on this, but the jump from Inarsi, okay, let me write that better, Inarsi level, BGP and OSPF to CCIE level is not that significant of a jump. There is a jump, there is more info and more content, you have to get deeper into the protocols, but it feels like the Inarsi content really set you up well for OSPF and BGP. Now, EIGRP, I felt like that was a significant jump. There was a lot of new stuff there when I was studying the routing and switching for those. But this is where I am now when it comes to routing, switching, and services. I'm currently focused on BGP. But what is the other thing that I'm working on? You know it. We're going to be talking about SD-WAN a lot in this video, so let's talk about it. I'm getting signed into my vManage environment here. That way we can take a look at my lab that we have going on. This is pretty much what I'm recording for CBT Nuggets too. Let me also fire up EVNG real quick. We'll get signed in there and I can kind of show you what the lab really looks like. Now, let me fix my zoom here. I've been working on this on my 4K sc screen. So there we go. That's a little bit better. Yeah, okay, here we go. This is, this is going to be our environment. And Keith Barker's environment that he's recording too is almost identical to this. That's because before we jumped into this course, we had a call between all of us and we said that this is how we feel like the lab should be laid out. These are the IP addresses that are going to be used. So that way when Keith teaches you things and then it goes to my content, it's not going to be an entirely new topology. It's going to look very familiar. The IP address scheme are the same, the way routes flow is all the same, and that's going to be really cool. So how are we breaking down this course? Well, Jeff Kish, you know Jeff by now, uh, Jeff is teaching the theory and the concepts. How does SD-WAN do what SD-WAN does? What is its purpose in life? How do you fulfill what you're trying to do? That's what Jeff is really going to be talking about. What problems does it solve? Keith is going to be getting you fired up and started when it comes to actually configuring these items. He takes you from square zero, you've got nothing, to having a working topology in lab. In fact, he has an entire skill built out on how to create an EVNG lab. Now, fair warning, we're not going to be giving images away here. You got to get the images on your own in a legal way. We're not going to be breaking any rules or licensing agreements. But once you've legally acquired the images, we are going to show you how to stand up an actual lab in EVNG, walking through that step by step. Step. Then Keith covers all of the theory on how to configure your devices with templates. Templates are so cool. They're a way that you can create device configurations. We're talking about interfaces and IP addresses. We're talking about OSPF and BGP, which you can see I've got BGP running here, OSPF running here, VRRP is running over here, T-Lock extensions, so cool. Keith is going to walk you through all of that. My sections are going to be focused primarily on policy. That's once we've got all of these devices stood up and configured with IP addressing and redundancy in place. Now, how do we want the topology to actually behave? When we're talking about policies, we're talking about how we want the data to flow throughout our topology. We could be saying things like, do we want a full mesh from every site to every site? Or do we want a hub and spoke? Even better, do we want a full mesh for one VRF and a hub and spoke for a different VRF. So maybe some traffic in our sites could be treated like a hub and spoke. Maybe I want this traffic to flow through site 50 first, but other traffic could be treated as a full mesh so they could go directly to each other. We can absolutely do that. Beyond that, we can do it based on specific applications themselves. And when I say specific applications, I mean we're doing deep packet inspection. That's layer five and up. 
For instance, our business critical applications like Office 365, which is Outlook or Teams, we can inspect the packets themselves and determine which application does this come from and should it be preferred over a different link. In fact, one of the coolest things that I think I teach is right here, how to use this tool right here, Ostinato. Ostinato can generate custom packets of any protocol we specify. So if you watch my YouTube video that came out on Monday, I actually teach how to create SIP packets because when traffic enters vEdge 10 here and it needs to be a voice traffic, it's going to be performing deep packet inspection. It's not going to be looking at the destination port, which in SIP's case is 5060. No, it's going to be actually looking at the payload itself. Is the payload, is the contents of the packet an actual SIP packet? If it is, we want to treat that differently. Maybe we want it to go over an MPLS link rather than out our business internet link. Beyond that, maybe I want some traffic to always flow over MPLS and internet bound traffic to go straight out to the internet from my site. All of this is configured under policies and we will teach you how to configure all of it in your environment, even with redundancy in mind. Then we'll teach you how to navigate through the vManage tool itself. How do you actually use all of these configuration items over here? How do we get it stood up? What are the ways that we can monitor and analyze traffic that's going on in our environment? And where can we identify any problems with how traffic is flowing to? Look, this, this technology is insanely powerful. It's insanely cool. It's just as cool as SD access for the enterprise side of things, but now we're talking about the WAN and branch connectivity of things too. It's so robust and I can absolutely see why SD-WAN and this particular tool is all the rage these days. So when it comes to the CCIE journey and SD-WAN itself, let's take a look at the software-defined infrastructure here. Do we cover all of these things in our course? Absolutely, 100%, because the ENSDWI exam, that's what we're recording for, goes well beyond these topics here. This goes really, really deep. Configuration templates, localized policies, and centralized policies here, they're just little bullet items, whereas on the exam itself, we get specific into which kinds of policies and which templates you need to configure and how you should design your SD-WAN environment for redundancy and all of these other really, really cool things. And I'd like to call your attention right now to 2.2a and 2.1a. I think these action verbs are kind of highlighting which part of the exam this is going to come under, right? The first three hours of the CCIE enterprise infrastructure exam are nothing but design. Now, of course, this is my just conjecture. I'm guessing. I don't know for sure because I haven't taken the exam. But seeing that they actually gave us the action verb of design right here on these things, you need to understand how SD access and SD WAN should be laid out before it's implemented and have a plan in place. And I feel like our content that we're creating right now for both of these sections, we did a really good job in tackling those items. So there you have it. That's what I've been up to lately. We're talking the books that I'm reading, progress towards routing and switching, and then what we've got going on with the SD-WAN environment itself. So that's my CCI journey as it stands today on August 28th. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.